basketball fans welcome back so in this video we'll just be going back way back to 2020 where the kenya morans were in the afro basket qualifiers 2021 and this was the first window that the kenya morans played and this happened in november it was almost mid-november there heading into december so this was just right at the year of the pandemic and coming off a silver medal from the afrocan that happened in 2019 it saw the kenya Morans finish number two with that silver medal then the kenya Morans played in the afro basket pre-qualifiers earlier way back in january early january in 2020 before even you knew about the pandemic then we had that whole pandemic situation the lockdown then the afro basket window opened up in late 2020 in november and we had this game so in this game kenya matched up against senegal and honestly in the lead up to this game there was no there was no ex much expectations of the team and looking at the landscape of the afro basket at the time given the fact that there are no many teams that were um were like their favorites that have been set up there but given the kenya morans being there it was just um it was just something good and there was that whole thought of uh, just getting out of that drought that 28 year old year 28 year drought or in, in, in getting into the afro basket and in this pool we had senegal angola and mozambique in this game as you can see on the screen we got brutally battered by ru ruined i can say utter domin dominated by senegal this game in 92-54 it was the first game that opened up like the whole window and losing like this was just embarrassing i know uh this this happened this happened and i know a lot of people can have a tendency to forget but man if you were there and you watch this thing live because i remember watching this thing live at that time at that time i was just uh scrolling into on my i was just scrolling on my um on my feed then i saw like on, on social media then i saw like uh fiba content i saw like the fiba for basket qualifiers were kicking off there i saw kenya is there so when i went and tuned in i tuned in the game luckily at the end of the first quarter so i thought like okay so the game has just started the first quarter was just actually quite good then the second quarter is where senegal just came in and put the you know put the hammer down where they scored 28 points to kenya's 14 at least the kenya morans won the third quarter but in the fourth quarter we only scored one bucket to the infamous two-point quarter that time um after the game i remember a few hours later i saw karabani yeah another another creator he came out of the video and mentioned it and at that time coach cliff was there at the helm and at that point we saw tai long Wai. he didn't have a good game there he had 13 points nine rebounds five assists and quite frankly um it wasn't something that um was pleasant especially losing at that fashion because especially our transition defense was just like luster there was there was no transition defense there was nothing there was nothing that we did especially at that side of the ball and even on the rebounds got our rebounded brutally shooting shooting wise we were so abysmal that was 55 percent 59 per point point five percent from for senegal and senegal was just you know eating their way inside and they just knew what shots they needed to take on a three ball you could see senegal shot at a 47.8 even 48 percent clip from three and from the line they shot 50 so the only place where we had like a good shot at you know cutting the deficit quote unquote because they didn't even cut any deficit was at the free throw line on the three you shot 21 percent on two point field goals you only shot 31 percent so that was actually embarrassing and despite even leading in offensive rebounds we actually virtually did nothing and it was just embarrassing especially the way the game ended and in the turnovers we just we just had that you know the turnover bug just you know continued we had our usual suspects putting up the whole dad performances and even the legacy players my god they were, they, were, they were just they were just playing you know poorly in there so we saw victor odendo <laughs> he played four minutes but actually did virtually nothing in that game talongwa he played heavy minutes at the time i know talongwa you know he's no longer with the team right right now 
and this is just going to it's just going to hurt the team especially offensively but i know he came out with a statement and he said he's not going to come back to the team so there's that the last time telongo played for the kenyan runs in the 2021 afro basket and we're going to get into that but in this game Honestly, it was just a dead game. Look at the plus minus. Look at the plus minus here. Victor Dendo, minus 14. Desmond O'Willy, minus 19. Desmond O'Willy is going to play for us right now uh, in, in this AfroBasket qualifiers held in Tunisia. There's actually this AfroBasket 2021 qualifiers. This window happened in Rwanda. So the good thing is we didn't have to travel that far because we have seen a couple of times where the Kenyan runs travel, they travel like a long distance. This time, the FIBA World Cup qualifiers had to travel to Dakar, Senegal, which is way far the West Africa. In, in the in the African in 2019, it was in Mali. In the Afro Basket, uh, not even Afro Basket, the FIBA World Cup qualifiers. Some of them are held in uh, Cairo, Egypt. So you could see like there was a lot of distance, but this one was actually quite near us. But he still managed to wet the bed. Desmond Willie is gonna play here. He's gonna play in this round. But my God, he's still a he was still abysmal. And it's not even about like scoring ten points or more. But it's also about being efficient. You can see this guy had four personal fouls. He had four personal fouls in the course in the team, and one turnover in there. Also, Tyler Ongwa, he was not he, he was not as efficient as you might think because he was one rebound shy from a double double, but. Because he had three personal fouls and five turnovers. So the dude, you know, that game he just had a poor outing. Then we had Ronnie Ronald Gombe, another guy. Um he he was actually, you know, abysmal too. And he, I you can even see like there was no efficiency, especially coming from his side. He had a plus minus for minus eleven. He had Victor Bosire. Bosire he played twenty seven minutes. And actually Ronald Gombe played heavy minutes, but you know. There was nothing. There was no production coming from his side. I feel like their offense at the time was just so haphazard, and it was just all over the place. So there was no, there was no way we were going to be able to do anything significant at the time. Even getting any production from him was uh, next to impossible. Then we've got Victor Bosire. This is actually the current team captain, and look at his production at this game against Senegal. A game that you know Senegal, they are a very good team, very well coached team. And they're the, they're the team that know what they're supposed to do and whatever they, it's need is needed in the court they're able to provide. But you can see this guy, he played oh damn near 28 minutes. He has zero points, 0 for 6. I know basketball, sometimes you can say it's not all about scoring, but my God, what did we see here? Look at this. This is crazy. Then he had a plus minus one minus 13. He had five turnovers and four fouls. So we're having this guy, uh, I'm pretty sure this guy had more fouls than even, you know, even, you know, even points. He didn't even have any point in the game. So that was crazy. They got Okal, Karanga, uh, 20, 24 minutes. They say about 24 minutes played, 10 points, 4 of 10 shooting. I mean, yeah, at least he was able to knock down 2 of 3 from the from downtown. He had 7 rebounds. But if you look at the personal fouls, three personal fouls, four turnovers. I mean, you cannot trust anyone to take care of the basketball. Valbuza, I mean, six points, Fidel Okoth. I mean, Fidel Okoth is being praised heavily right now. But if you look at this guy statistically, he's one of the most inefficient players that we have on the, on the team. Then we've got Fahim. Fahim, this is the time he got his shot, but he was not able to get any looks. And... And also Val Valentina Kinder, look at him. Minus 30. Oh, and Eric Mutor. Oh my god. This is another guy that I'm so happy he's not gonna travel with the team because this is the type of production that he produces. So you can't trust anyone here. So everybody here had a dead game. And even the score line just tells you everything that you need to know. Oh my god. It was it was just sad. It was just really, really sad. So I'm pulling these stars from the FIBA Do basketball website. Make sure to check that out if you want to get the comprehensive like you know stats of what the, what happened in that game but when i watched that game and i looked at it it, it just showed like those there were, there was a lot of things that needed needed to change and le it left a lot to be desired especially when it came to the kenya morans at the time so let's just hold on let's just put 
to see Bosire in the first quarter. Let's see. Can we put on the, all, all the players in the first half? Look at this. All shots. Can you see made shots? Missed shots. Check out all those missed shots, especially from inside. Mid-range to inside. I know basketball is all about like uh, capitalizing on the high percentage shot but you cannot be you couldn't say that you're missing at this rate at that time so this showed me that there was a lot of uh, lack of chemistry at the time even i raised these issues way back when i saw them if you miss a couple of threes it's okay because there's a low percentage shot so it goes in about you know 47 percent of the time but this one you have to be much more efficient with it and they want and even right now these are the same things that are plaguing the team right now and it's an ex it's inexcusable at all and if you look at the, the amount of you know there's not even proper shot selection in the first half for anyone nobody was even trying to manufacture good looks the plays were just outdated and it's coach cliff who was doing all this and he was orchestrating everything so in the second half my god in the third quarter alone look at that they they somewhat tried to you know score inside but there was nothing but in the fourth quarter that's when we only had like one dot all of them were all misses all of them all of them were all misses for him he missed the jumper in there you can even check out let's check out in the fourth quarter in the first quarter in the first quarter was going inside he missed a jumper ronald mccombie missed a jumper valbuza missed a jumper eric motori missed layup missed a layup in there who else ronald gombe he missed it tai Longwa, he missed it oh my god it's just embarrassing right now and and, and and it was and this is something that is actually quite recurrent who was our three-point shooter at the time it was Kuranga. that's just a lucky shot just want a really lucky shot. Who else? Then you head into, into the second quarter. Who was that that made that shot? You can see this one really the dunk made. The mid range. This was actually you may, you may you may think that you know his he didn't have like that much of a contribution like that because of course the ball is just gonna go in go into his hands at the time. Then check out Mutoro. That's one. <laughs> How many shots? How many shots from three? Two of seven, twenty-eight percent, twenty-eight point six percent. So clearly, you can see this guy is not efficient, not an efficient piece that you can rely on. Was well, hit a three. Or Carl, two of his threes, but this two of seven. This is the reason as to why this man shouldn't be on the team at all. Then we got Victor Bosiri. He went zero for six, and he had he didn't even go to the line. Didn't even draw any foul. Dude never do never even do a foul. Then we have who made this shot? It was only Ronald Gombe that made it. All these other guys missed it. Everybody missed. And they're just jacking up shots. And then nothing was going in. I don't even know why Mutoro was taking this shot. He had no business taking that. He should have remembered that this is not Nyayo Stadium. This was a Nyayo at all. Overall, it was a very pathetic game. It was a very poor game. And honestly. It's one of those games that we really, really uh, have a tendency to forget. And it only happened for four years ago. And this shows me there's no improvement of the team. There has never been an improvement. Because the same players that played then, they're the same players that play now. And they are much more inefficient. So in the coming videos, we're just going to be looking at uh, science type of performances. And I'm just going to give my, two, my takes on that. So in the next video, I'll talk about Kenya versus Angola. And Angola, coincidentally, are the team that are going to meet in this window of the AfroBasket. So stay tuned to that. I see, uh, I know you've seen like some, there's some, some different branding in there. I've tried to switch it up a bit. You can see some more NBA Kenya in there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to ride out with this. <laughs> I'm just going to ride out a bit with this, you know, uh, banner. It actually really looks good. And I'll just continue with uh, more direct basketball content right there. So, but this is the same brand. So NBA Kenya is, uh, it's a brand that is within the Ndere to Basketball Network. So in the Ndere to Basketball Network, you have NBA Kenya. You've got the Kenya Basketball Community. You've got Ndere to Basketball Radio. They're all under that whole huge network. So 
yeah i mean this was actually a game that was so embarrassing and the press conference was equally as funny because uh at some point you could see how nonchalant the team was and nobody like you know give it like uh, some level of seriousness at the time so uh, i'm going to, i'm just gonna you know uh, leave it at that and i'm just going to <laughs> Uh, go ahead and just drop other more videos talking about you know games and anything that emerges but stay tuned because a lot of these videos are just gonna be coming out like this so yeah man and um i'm out peace